Now, they say cats have nine lives, but Frankie the tabby has taken it one step further by becoming the first cat to come back yeah. from the dead. Lazarus the cat. <laughs> After Frankie went missing for days, the Fitzsimmons family thought they sadly and tragically discovered his body on the side of the M56. But after getting the cat, they found uh, cremated Frankie miraculously turned up on their doorstep. We're joined by Frankie's owner, Rachel, now alongside, of course, Dr Scott. Rachel, I mean, it's a bittersweet story because a poor cat obviously like passed away and got hit by a car and all this. However, the most important thing, you got your cat back. Yeah, we did. Here he is, yeah. Looking very um, pleased yeah. with himself. Well, let's... He is, yeah, he's frail, but he's, he's, he's surviving. That's good. Oh, Frankie, let's start... Oh, sorry, Rachel, let's start off... <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I want to speak to Frankie. <laughs> <laughs> Rachel, let's start off from the very beginning. What, how long have you had Frankie and what did this cat mean to your family? Um, we've had Frankie over 14 years, so we got them before we got him before we got married, before we had the children. So he, he really was our first or is our first baby. Um, so we'd had him just over 14 years when he went missing. We, we think he was about two when we got him as a rescue cat, but it's a guesstimate, really. He, he could be a little bit older. And let's go back to the, the night he actually went missing. What happened? Um, he went out at seven o'clock. He, he usually goes to bed at the same time as my son, bizarrely. He sleeps in his own bed in my son's bedroom. Yeah. But that particular night, he'd asked to go out at seven and my son, Remy, had let him out of the front door, which again was a bit of a strange occurrence because he, he would usually do everything he could to keep him in, to take him to bed with him. Um, so, yeah, he went out on the Wednesday night and he didn't come home. Oh, and that's, it's, it's weird when that happens, isn't it? I've got cats and when they don't come... Well, they don't speak to their normal routine. It's just so disconcerting as you go to bed, isn't it? It's sort of something sort of you, you yeah. start you start to kind of think, well, where are they, and is something up? So, what 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 were the next stages after that? Yeah, well, we weren't worried the first night. He'd been out overnight before. Um, it was probably the, the Friday when we really started to worry when he'd been gone for two nights. So we we alerted the neighbours. We put an advert on the local Facebook group. We, we searched ourselves early morning and into the night, and it was just nowhere to be seen. Scott, you must hear this all the time. Yes, we get a lot of cases where, where cats um, are missing. And because cats have a right to roam here in the UK, they are intrepid little creatures and uh, they, they can roam up to sort of two or three blocks naturally. So it's not a surprise that this little guy um, maybe was, uh, you know, did an overnighter. Um, but anything <laughs> longer than that, uh, you, you do start to worry as an They're such homebodies. What normally spooks them? So that's the thing, is you never really know, but... Cats do become fearful of things like the next door neighbour's dog, other cats can chase them, foxes as well, and obviously road traffic. And when they run away, we know the difference between dogs and cats. Cats will be furtive and they'll hide. They don't like strangers. They don't like new places. They're real homebodies, as you say. So that's where they'll hide away. And even if their owners are calling them, sometimes they won't respond. I'd be very interested to know, Rachel, did... You have him microchipped? Yeah, yeah, he's microchipped. Right. And I know that there was the story about the cremation. Of let's let's the go back to that point. Let's go back that's... to the point where you went on the motorway. You ended up yeah. on the M56. Tell us what happened then. Well, we live really close to the junction of the motorway and I was bringing my son home from football on the Saturday morning and at this point we were worried, so I was keeping an eye out everywhere I went. Yeah. And I saw a cat on the hard shoulder of the motorway I was coming, as I was coming up at the junction. Um, so I came in and told my husband, we, we, went, we dropped the kids off next door and we drove backwards and forwards along the main carriageway, obviously at speed, but we could see the cat or what was left of the cat. And it, it looked exactly like Frankie. Um, we parked up and then my husband walked down the slip road, grass verge as far as he could safely to take a photograph of the, of the animal. Um, it wasn't a nice photograph, but it enabled us to see the back half of what was left of him. Um, and, and we compared it to so many pictures of Frankie, and it, it was just that it looked identical in markings. So we were sure that the remains, the, you know, the, the bit of animal that was left, I guess, was Frankie. So you literally um, was adamant in your mind, this was your cat. Let's let's um, cremate him. You decided to cremate this cat. Yeah, well, it all added up: the timings, the proximity to the house, yeah. um, the highways agent. Brilliant. They went for us. Um, 
and he rang me and asked me to describe Frankie while he was there on the hard shoulder and I, I described him as a fluffy tabby cat with white markings and he said yeah it's you know that is I think this is your cat so he, he picked him up for us and took him to the motorway <clears throat> excuse me the motorway compound and we went and collected him from there um in the in the meantime I had googled how best to bury a cat I, I wasn't really aware of pet cremation in all honesty I just didn't really want the remains of him in the garden for the dog to dig up and, yeah, and the children sure. to sort. Of, it just didn't feel right. And cremation, when I when I came across it, seemed like the nicest thing to do for him. Yeah. So, and Dr. Scott, I want to come back to you, but but just obviously there's a, a happy end to this story because we can see him here. So, did he just turn up turn up back at the house, or how did? Yeah. It... Three weeks and one day later, um, John, my <laughs> husband, heard him meowing and went outside, and there he was. Wow. Very, very thin. He'd lost a third of his body weight. Mm. Um, and we think he's had a bit of a head trauma. But, yeah. So, any ideas where, did, where he's been? Now. Absolutely none. Oh, wow. None. I'm just so none glad whatsoever. there's a happy ending for your cat. In all Do you know what? I actually think the cat is the cat. Oh, yeah. I actually this. believe that that was Frankie. Yeah, I do. Well, did Frank. anyone come and get in touch with you that they had lost their cat or their cat had Funny gone enough, missing? Funny enough, there's more than one white and tabby cat in the UK. <laughs> Just saying. Well, I think it was Frankie, and okay. Frankie came back from the dead. Thank what you. do you think, Rachel? <laughs> yeah, we hope we like to think that. Yeah. Aww. <laughs> Rachel, I'm, literally, I'm... you're just being so polite there. Yeah, yeah. Alistair, I'd, I'd <laughs> yeah. like to think that too. Um, the, the key thing for me, though, is the fact that uh, no one decided to to scan the cat that was on the side of the road because that's a real shame because that owner is still. No, they apparently they did, but it was so oh. mangled that they, they they couldn't get. That's not the case. They did. Yeah. yeah. They, they scanned, but they couldn't pick a microchip up, potentially? Yeah, apparently. There was, there was no... Yeah, he'd been decapitated, so they couldn't scan the animal on the side of the road, unfortunately. They did try. Right, yeah. right. So, yeah, I mean, like, the Rachel, key thing... So just, Rachel, thank you so much. It's a, it's a lovely story. I'm glad that... Um, I'm, glad, I'm glad it has a happy ending. Very briefly, Dr. Scott, only a few yes. seconds left. But how, yes. What should people do if they sort of, look after the cats? Yeah, bit? so yeah. always make sure that they're ID'd. When you microchip, make sure that you've updated the details um, and take an accurate photo of your cat so that you know if they do get lost, you've got that picture ready to go. Yeah. Oh, it's a great you, website Scott. as well out there. You can Absolutely. Put cat posters yeah. Online checks. Like yeah. well. Thank, Thank you so much.